welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are going to be making some faux pebble earrings. So little stacks of rocks for your earrings basically as dangly earrings um, but instead of really heavy rocks and me learning how to drill through rocks which I don't know how to do we're making them out of some oven dry clay. I will link my original video how to make faux rocks. It'll be helpful uh, up above if you haven't seen it and uh, yeah I'll link everything you need down in the description below along with my socials. Let's get going. So to start off with, since this is jewelry, you're gonna need a little findings kit. This one has everything you need to make uh, earrings, but also necklaces. It's got those long bars in there, so earrings or necklaces, which makes it perfect for this. And grab your clay in multiple colors. I have red, white, which is translucent. I have black, gray, which is also an effect, so it's shimmery, and then pearlized black. Secret ingredient, dryer lint in multicolors. So let's put out a little paper towel to protect our workstation and go ahead and grab your findings kit. And what I want are these long ones down here, so I'm gonna pull two of those out. Next up, grab your clay to make your rocks with. Here we go. Now you have your color set up. Let's start making our rocks. Start by uh, kind of separating out some piles of what you want with each. Remember that for each pile, you need to make two pebbles out of it or two rocks. So try to make sure that you're going to be able to do that with what you're choosing. So let's start with the darkest one. Take your color separately. Mix them together till they form a nice coil, but that the heat of your hands have heated them up so they're very workable and pliant, kind of like, almost like dough or Play-Doh. They won't quite reach that consistency depending on which type of clay you have, but uh, should definitely be more malleable than straight out of the package. Just like that. Take our black, just like that. So that's ready for one rock, so do that for the rest of your piles. And it's time for the secret ingredient, dryer lint. I'm choosing a lighter color for this one. And what you are going to want to do is just kind of sandwich it in between the two coils of clay that you've made and then work it completely through. Start by mashing it together, twisting it however you want. Uh, the point is to get the fibrous texture in there without completely mixing the colors up too much together. If you haven't seen my original how to make faux rock videos, uh, that might be helpful at this point. It's linked down below, but basically just keep mushing and smushing it together until you have something that resembles a pebble. Because we are making them into earrings, don't forget that we need to kind of split it. So try to make the pattern interesting all the way around the clay blob for lack of a better word. Um, that way when you split it, you don't have all the really cool texture on one side and then just like one solid color of clay for the other. Uh, the reason we're making them in batches so that we can split them is so that the color and texture is similar in each pebble so that it looks like you found pebbles that resemble each other and that you spent a long time looking for them or that the artist of the earrings spent a long time looking for them. So just kind of coil it up, mush it, smush it until you have an interesting looking rock and then divide it in two. And we are going to want to repeat this process for all four of our piles because we want four piles of two pebbles each for a total of eight pebbles so that we have um, two identical earrings with four pebbles on each. So I'm doing a very similar thing with the last two rocks. I'm starting with the dark colors on this third pebble here, mainly because the red and black are going to overpower the white if I start with them from the beginning. I want to make sure to leave the red very noticeable, um, adding in a little bit at the end as needed, and then at the very end adding in the white uh, once the dryer lint is all the way worked through so that I keep those large veins of white and red when I make my pebble. I want those very visible, um, not overpowering the stone, so it still looks natural, but definitely visible. For the fourth set of stones or pebbles that we are working on, it's gonna be a very light pale stone, so I just have a very small amount of black. I did this last, my fingers are already a little bit um, darkened from working with the clay, so that's gonna work in there too. So it's mainly white with a little bit of red, a little bit of gray. I'm using a light dryer lint and uh, going to do the same thing that I did before, which is work through the dark colors in the lint and then bring in the 
palest color at the end just to leave the majority of the pale color on there so that my stones are all very similar not only to each other in size and shape and color but also kind of similar as a group because that's really important and going to be uh, visually pleasing to look at when they're earrings. So now we are grabbing the long sticks from the findings kit and I'm going with my largest pebble and I put large veins of white and red on here. It's going to be at the bottom of the earring and quite visible. So it's important to make this stone very appealing. And because these are not real rocks, they're foam, it's very easy to push the wire right through them. I'm trying to not make them misshapen as I go and I'm just going largest to smallest. That's the way I kind of had envisioned when I was making the rock. So largest, smallest, dark to light, but each rock on the side has some interesting pebbles, um, pebble texture, some, uh, you know, dots and marbling that the other ones don't have. That's why I didn't make eight rocks the same. I made them in batches so that they are all slightly different color, shape, size, uh, and texture. So, uh, yeah, that one looks pretty good. I'm going to copy it on the other side. Basically just uh, figure out which side of the stone you want at the bottom and then go largest to smallest and they should look pretty much the same when I'm all done. And they do and they're so cute. I can't wait to start baking these. So I'm going to pop these into the oven just according to the directions on the package, which is 230 degrees Fahrenheit for half an hour. The effects clay is going to change the way they look a little bit. They won't look exactly as they do now because the white's going to go a little bit translucent and give it more of a minerally property, but I'm excited to see what they look like. All right, fresh from the oven. They're a little warm. Um, I did not think about picking up the metal part. That would definitely be the hottest part until after it was in my hand. But you know what? It actually isn't that bad. Um, I'm going to let these dry completely and then do a close-up at the end, but these look really cool. Um, the white I'm using is like a translucent white, and it really gives a very realistic look to the rocks because in some places it stays white, in some places it goes translucent, kind of like actual minerals and crystals in rocks do. Helps with that marbling effect, so uh, quite pleased with these, but uh, we will let these finish up dry and do some close-ups and then turn them into the earrings. I cannot even express to you how much I love these. Like, I wasn't 100% sure. I do wear earrings, but not super often. But these I would definitely wear. Like, they are so cool and so realistic looking. Like, the lint in there really does mattify the clay and give just enough texture that they look like real rocks just a little bit of color variance from the different clays. I do love using the white translucent um, FX one because it really does create like this cool, not quite see-through, it's not see-through, but it's like not quite white and it's not like a true color. It almost looks like a little mineral buildup on the rocks. But each one looks a little bit different. I like that I made them in like dual batches so that they kind of match ear to ear, but uh, not rock to rock going up on the same one. So first thing we need to do to make these earrings is take the top. I don't know what's stuck to my uh, multi-purpose tool there. And we're just going to roll these around into little loops, just like that. So same thing, just grab the top, give it a little twist down, just like that. In the findings kit, you will also have dangly earring connectors. So just put that underneath just like that and go ahead and pinch your loop closed. There you go. On to the next one. I don't leave myself a lot of room with this one. There we go. Pinch our loop closed. And I'm going to clean these real quick before I put them on because I do have delicate ears that don't often wear earrings. So if I wear them and I don't clean them, um, bad things happen. So one sec, I'll get these cleaned and we'll put them on see how they look. Okay guys, these are the earrings on. Like I said, they're super cool. I love them. Even though I'm not really much of an earrings person just because I tend to touch my hair a lot and anything in my ear gets ripped out and it hurts, but um, these are pretty neat. One of the major bonuses of using clay instead of actual rocks is that they're so lightweight that they're not actually pulling on my ears. You know, I mean, it is a little bit more weight than wearing nothing, but can you imagine if these were actually rocks? Like that would be insane. You can see it's not even tugging on my earlobe at all. So uh, 
These are super cool. I really like these. They're so unique and I'm really excited to share them with you. Thanks so much for joining me on this one, guys, and I will see you here again soon. Bye for now.